Matt Bernier with the stakes preview using the new classic PPs available on DRF.com. We'll take a look at the eighth race at Belmont Park on Friday afternoon. It is the great two true north, six and a half furlongs on the main track. This is a very, very salty group. Uh, you can play this race and all the other races at Belmont Park all week long over on DRF Bets. This video here going to show you a little bit of the functionality of the new classic PPs. If you're unfamiliar with them, head on over to DRF.com. Take a look. You can see a number of different things. I'm I'm just going to highlight a few different pieces that you can go through and explore with the new classic PPs. As I go through and take a look at the field and post position order, we'll start with Bon Raison going out for Carlos Martin. I think Martin's a, a very underrated trainer in here. Uh, this is a horse that really has sort of come into his own ever since Martin got a hold of him. Uh, shorter races really is when this horse has also gone to the next level. You can see over here two for two at six and a half furlongs. That's the distance of the True North on Friday afternoon. Loves Belmont Park. Two for five overall, four times in the money. Um, you can see over here, you can take notes for each individual horse. You see this bar right here. You can take notes for the race individually. Uh, for this exercise, I chose to write in my value line for each one of these horses. So I've made Bon Raison 19 to 1 in here. It's not because I don't think he's a talented runner. It's just because this is a really salty group, and I think you can go a few different ways in here. Uh, bon Raison, he's probably going to be doing his best running from the back of the pack, uh, regardless of the fact that he was this close close in this most recent run. Keep in mind, that was out at a mile and a 16th. I think at these shorter distances, he'll be coming from a little bit farther back. We'll move on to the number two horse in here. That is Stan the Man for John Terranova, making his second start off the bench. His most recent effort nearly won a graded stakes race. That was the grade three Westchester, ran into Nicodemus. He'll run into him again here on Friday afternoon. Uh, this slight turn back in distance is a little bit intriguing to me. I do wonder if he's better at seven eighths or a one turn mile as opposed to these shorter distances. But a fair enough position to take a chance with this horse. Figures to be forwardly placed. Doesn't need the lead. We can see from that run back last November right here going 7 eights at the big A. He was able to sit off of a target and still be effective. Keep in mind, though, that was against N1X Company, now facing much better. Again, distance being the shortest he's run at since February of 2018. Part of me thinks that he's better going longer. Part of me wonders also about that Westchester overall. I want each of those top two horses to come back and prove to me that they are what they ran to. But to be fair, Sonny Ridge, the third place finisher, he came back and won a stakes race down at Monmouth Park last weekend, earning a 97 buyer speed figure. So perhaps the top two from that Westchester are horses that should be considered in here and taken seriously. I made Stan the Man 10 to 1 on my value line. Number three is one of the more polarizing horses in training. That is Catalina Cruiser for John Sadler. Joel Rosario has the mount here. Uh, most recently saw this horse in the Breeders' Cup. He ran in the Dirt Mile. He was the 9-10 to 10 favorite, and he was terrible. He was nowhere. Up the track, uh, went away for quite some time. This is one of those instances where his best races, whether it's the Pat O'Brien, the San Diego, or this N1X down at Santa Anita last May, any one of those races is probably good enough to win. My concern with him going into a race like the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, and I picked him, and I was wrong, but my concern was what was going to happen when he just got some sort of a fight. Because in these three races here, really all four of his first career races, he never faced any real challenge. None of the competitors could run with him. Well, when he got to the Dirt Mile, what was going to happen when a horse like City of Light or Seeking the Soul or Bravazo or some of these other runners, what was going to happen when they put up a little bit of a fight? Would Catalina Cruiser respond and go on with it? I, I suppose you can look at it and say something must have gone wrong following the Breeders' Cup because he was gone for as long as he was. Um, but I, I would be lying if I said I had a 100% a faith and, and confidence in this horse if he were to get into some sort of a prolonged duel. I think he needs to prove that he is actually one of those fighters. I've talked about it a number of times when we talk about racehorses. Some of them, no different than, than human athletes. Some of them have all the, the sort of God-given ability in the world, but they don't have that fight in him. And on the flip side, some athletes don't have all the traits and all the assets that, that athletes and people would want, but they've got that drive and that determination. I want to see if Catalina Cruiser has that. Can he prove that he has that sort of will to go out there, get into a battle, take a punch, and still be able to go on and finish the job? I also do wonder about the six and a half furlongs off of this layoff. I wonder if it's nothing more than a means to an end. Get him ready to go out to Del Mar to run in those big races over the summer, whether it's the San Diego or a race like the Pacific Classic. Uh, but Catalina Cruiser, again, I believe one of the more polarizing horses in training. I made him 5-1 to one on my value line. 
Nicodemus spoke about the other horse in that Westchester that I'll be running here, Stand the Man, earlier. We made mention that Sonny Ridge came back one next out, so he flattered the form of that Westchester a little bit. Um, hard to argue with the form that this horse has kept for Linda Rice since the blinkers went on. Uh, again, another instance where I wonder if a little bit more ground is to this one's benefit. Now we turn back to six and a half furlongs from a one-turn mile. I made him 10 to 1. I think it's also worth noting, look at his record on a wet racing surface. He's 2 of 4 lifetime, 3 times in the exacta from 4 lifetime starts on a wet track. Two of his big wins most recently have come over wet surfaces. I don't think you're going to get that on Friday afternoon. Uh, Nicodemus, I made him 10 to 1. Strike Power goes out from Mark Henning. And another sort of nice feature of the new classic PPs, you see this green buyer speed figure. What's that all about? Well, that race came on grass. So whenever you see a green fire speed figure that means that that's the surface that it came on and the black figures they came on the main track whether it's dirt or synthetic depending on what jurisdiction you're looking at um look strike power is a fascinating horse because the talent i think is there but he is a horse that if he doesn't get the lead to date anyway he doesn't win the race he came back off of a long layoff down at Gulfstream Park, one by five lengths with a 101 buyer. You'll note that he went right to the top, said, come and catch me. No one could. You go to the first two starts of his career. He just opens up, spread eagles the field, and buries him. Problem is, when he doesn't make the front, oof, these races aren't, aren't all that strong. Um, the other thing that I'm a little bit leery about with this horse, you take a look at the field that he ran against most recently. Some of those horses have come back to run. Uh, Be Gone Daddy, the runner-up, who, granted, was five lengths behind Strike Power, he came back and returned with an 80 buyer. Sweet on the Ladies came back with a 66 buyer speed figure. The fourth and fifth place finishers came back to earn buyers of 86 and 79. Strike Power is going to be facing much better company in here. But I suppose there is a scenario where he goes out there, he is the controlling speed, and maybe he does do exactly what he's done these other times when he's been able to make the front. He just goes out there and blitzes the field. I want him to prove to me that he can do this against better horses. I made him 16 to 1. That may sound a little bit uncharitable, but this is a very, very tough race, and I think there are some other big contenders that we have yet to touch on. Recruiting Ready. The very nice horse. He's honest enough. The number six horse goes out for Stanley Huff. Uh, most recently, couldn't run with Forenze Fire. I believe we will see Forenze Fire in the Metropolitan Handicap on Saturday afternoon. Uh, this distance, I don't think, is an issue for recruiting ready. He displayed in the Gulfstream Sprint three starts back the ability to sit off of a target and still be effective. Uh, it'll be interesting to see where he is positioned in here because I think you don't want to let a horse like Strike Power get too far away. I would imagine Luis Saez is relatively aggressive with this horse, puts him right up there, pushing the pace throughout. Uh, he could theoretically work out a, a perfect trip if that's the sort of situation that presents itself. Uh, I'm still always a little bit curious with this horse against better horses. Uh, can is it, is it a matter of him just being able to go out there and beat up on lesser horses and, and things of that nature? And then when the real waters get deep, does he not quite pass that acid test? We'll find out. I made recruiting ready 12 to 1. Scroll down here to Whitmore. Now, I think Whitmore is a, a very difficult call in this race. I made him 5-1 to one on my value line, as you can see over here. Again, you can write anything you want in this text. Uh, it can be a horse note. It can be a trip note. It can be anything you want. It'll save in the PPs. So the thing here for me would be when Whitmore comes back, I just erase the value line and put in a new one. Uh, but the thing with Whitmore, we know what he's capable of on his best day. I do wonder if we are starting to see... Maybe he's trending off form because his hot springs was a tremendous effort against Share the Upside, who's a solid enough older horse for Steve Asmussen. He's not a superstar, though. He came back, and he tried to run with Matoli early on. Now, we know Matoli came back and won that grade one Churchill Downs, and he's going to be one of the players in the Metropolitan on Saturday afternoon. But we just didn't see that nice sustained bid from Whitmore that we've just been accustomed to seeing. And it does make me wonder a little bit if we are starting to trend the wrong direction. Now, look, he's run well in all three races at Belmont Park throughout his career. This distance is not going to be an issue for him. He's going to be one that I think would appreciate a little bit of pace. And I think it would just be a situation where if things fall the way that they potentially could from a pace standpoint, Whitmore is likely to come with an honest bid. I also, though, wouldn't fault anyone that takes the approach that he is going the wrong way, that he is trending the wrong direction. Three consecutive races, three consecutive uh, descending buyer speed figures. Uh, we'll find out. The good Whitmore absolutely can win this race. The Whitmore that we've seen in each of the past two, I'm a little bit unsure. I still made him 5-1 to one simply because I respect him and Ron Moquette. We go on to Do Share. Do Share to me is 
the horse that I'm most interested in in this race. The number eight horse going out from Michael Maker. Uh, Irad Ortiz retains the mount. This is going to be his second start off of the bench. And this Churchill Downs race, it, it may not look spectacular on paper. Looks like he made it just uh, past some tired horses. But when you factor in the horses that ran one, two, three, were basically one, two, three for the most part throughout the run. The only horse that made it up any significant ground in the race was Dushare. Now, this was off of a two month layoff. Sound a little bit familiar when you look at these PPs? Comes into the General George off of a two month layoff, puts in a nice late bid, everything looks good, a fair enough effort, nothing spectacular, but nothing nothing crazy. He comes back in the most recent start, or his, his second start off the layoff, in the Tom Fool, and yes, he got an unbelievable pace situation. Although Timeform US has all these fractions color coded blue, I don't agree with that, but that's the beautiful thing about handicapping. You need to make a call on some things. He came with a hellacious kick. It was a tremendous, tremendous rally down the center of the track, and he earned a 105 buyer speed figure, a 128 Timeform US rating. Now, the reason I think this Churchill Downs race is actually a little bit better than maybe it's, it looks at face value, you go through and the most recent Timeform US rating, the raw number that he earned that day is a 120. That's the highest last out in the field. And if you believe there's about a 20 point differential between the buyers and the Timeform ratings, do share stacks up really well in this field. I think Michael Maker has fe- figured figured out what's on going on with this horse. I think he's got him good. I think second off the bench, you're going to get an effort closer to this Tom Fool than what you got in the General George or the Churchill Downs. He's a giant number on the morning line. I believe he's 15 to 1. Uh, the numbers, and, and that's something else to keep in mind. We record these videos as early as we do. Uh, post positions have been drawn, but the program numbers are not in, and the morning line values are not in. They will come in in time. Don't worry if that's something that you're concerned about when you see this. Uh, I believe he's 15 to 1 on the morning line. I made him 5 to 1. If there's a little bit of pace, I think Dushare is going to come with his run. Uh, Dushare is going to be my selection in the True North. Gold for the King. Really nice New York bread for Charlie Baker. Um, I've always been a fan of this horse. My concern with him is against open company. It feels like he's just a notch below as opposed to when he faces state breads, New York breads. He just goes out there and he wallops them. I think he's a really nice horse. He's fired fresh off the bench in the past. Um, He's not one that I'm terribly concerned about. I think you're going to get a, a fair effort from him. Whether or not it's good enough, We'll find out. I made him 13 to 1 on my value line. And the last runner in the field going out for Jason Service is Mr. Dougie Fresh. Jose Loscano retains the mount. Most recently a winner of a non-winners of two. Other than that came over a sloppy sealed track at this distance, though. Um, For what it's worth, you know, he's a nice little horse. I don't know that he's a superstar. The fourth place finisher, uh, this isn't something that you really want to, you know, I don't know that you want to use this as the barometer for Mr. Dougie Fresh. Fourth place finisher came back from that most recent run and earned a 61 in his next start. I think the race that maybe you want to use as the barometer is this one right here. This race on May thir- uh, March 30th, excuse me, at Aqueduct, because the horse that defeated him, Mr. Bricks, his next start, he came back and earned an 89 buyer. Hoffenheim, the third place finisher, came back and earned a 91. Uh, folks that are familiar with Hoffenheim from the West Coast, he's been on the East Coast for a little while, but Hoffenheim doesn't really like to win races too often. Uh, and the fifth and sixth place finishers, they came back and earned buyers of 92. Why am I talking about the Keisha Electronica from two starts back and not the most recent race? I think this is the Keisha Electronica, the most representative effort from Mr. Dougie Fresh. I think the company he faced that day was less than what he's going to face on Friday, and therefore I'm against him. I made him 19-1 to on my value line. So there's a look at the field. Uh, I've made it clear my selection in here, the horse I'm interested in. And boy, if if the morning line and the odds end up checking out, compared to the 5-1 to one value line I've made do share, um, I would absolutely have to put in a pretty significant win wager on him. I just feel like you're sit, I think he is set up for a big effort here if he gets the pace that he needs. Um, I, I just think he's a really nice horse. I think Mike Maker does a great job, uh, and I think he has figured out what makes this horse tick. I think he's got a big chance in here. He's won at Belmont in the past. The distance isn't a problem. Uh, I'm going to go with Dushare, I believe. I believe he's 15-1 to 1 on the morning line. I made him 5-1. to 1. Now, I would go up here to the top of the new classic PPs. I would click on wagering and live video. He would have been one of my first selection in horizontals. I would have made him an A. You can go through. You pull up the live feed for Belmont Park. You click a couple different things here and there. It will give you options about what wagers you want to put in. You just click bet now. It goes right into your DRF bets account. You are good to go. And guess what? If you had a hard time figuring out this race or you want some second opinions, you click on news and analysis, you'll get 
picks from all of our DRF handicappers. And over here, when everything is finalized, you'll get Mike Beer's analysis for the Grade 2 True North, the new classic PPs over on DRF.com. Go and give them a look. The True North, it's race 8 on Friday. I like do share in this spot. Schedule post time for the 8th at Belmont on Friday is 442 Eastern. Good luck.